Now, you know, you know this process, I call this the process in which this, you know, the your sperm cells get into the lumen are called spermiation, right? And how does that happen, okay? Do the sperm cells move by themselves? Guys, you have to remember this. You know, till the sperms are in your male reproductive system, they do not buy, they do not move by themselves, okay? They move based on two peristaltic contractions and also based on the fluid movement. Once it's ejaculated and once in once it in vagina, that's the only time the sperm will start moving, okay? But before that, till it's in the human reproductive system, they do not move by themselves, all right? Now, this, this process, okay, the, the, these peristaltic contractions are usually done to move through the tubules, are usually done by this, this guy, this myoid cell, okay, that I talked about previously too. That's what these are. They do a peristaltic contractions, all right? And also one more thing I do have to say is that this sustentacle cells, they're very, very sensitive to temperature also. Remember, in order to, in order to make a sperm, okay, usually the testes have to be in a relatively, you know, lower than your body or core temperature, so two or three degrees less than that, okay? And so that's why, you know, this sartorius cells also play an important role in maintaining the homeostasis so that way this sperm production does not disturb okay now after this you know let's say this then after what is going to happen this enzyme binding pro protein and let's say the, what is this uh, right here these the sperm is right here okay all these guys and then we say this is what let's say this is a mitochondria right here okay and this is a neck area and mid base, right? And it's all tail. Not only that, they have this what? Androgen binding protein there, right? In heaven B, right? All that. What is that? What also? There's a Muller inhibiting factor. It's really, really important, okay? And also a different growth factor. They also have like those ceruloplasmine is there, like transferrin is there, all that. All right? Now, now, after that, you know, we also have to talk about one more thing, you know. The maintenance of how does this, you know, the sperm is going to get maintained in the testosterone, uh, sorry, in, in the lumen, and how does that get to this other areas, like, you know, from, from the testes, right, from the seminiferous tuber, because this is, I'm talking about the seminiferous tuber. It has to go to the epididymis, from the epididymis, it goes to the vast difference, then it, from the vast difference, what is going to happen? You know, that's going to, you know, go to the, the ejaculatory duct and then urethra and then it comes out from your system, right? So we have to talk about how does the the sperm is like here, you know, maintained, all right? Now for that we have to talk about is the lytic cells because this lytic cells are one that you know that produces what testosterone. We we let's say that produces androgens. Okay, that's what it does. is lytic cells. Okay, so. How does the lytic cell produces androgen? That's what we're talking about. So, so let's take this one cell, lytic cells, and I drew here. Okay, this is my lytic cells. You see, this is my lytic cells. And let me erase this part right here. Okay, this is I erase it. So let's say this is my lytic cell right here. Okay, this is my lytic cells. And what is going to happen in the lytic cell here is that, you know, in order to make the the androgens, what do we need? You guys remember this, right? In order to make this androgen, we need a cholesterol, right? And where's the cholesterol come from? If you guys remember the lipoprotein, lipoprotein, the biochemistry, lipoprotein synthesis, right? All that. What is going to happen here is that, guys, they have a receptor right here, okay? And I'm gonna write it down here. What is this receptor called? These are called HDL receptor, okay? And what is that, what is the actual name for the HDL receptor? It's called a scavenger SCRB1 family. You guys remember this? It's a scavenger, okay, protein receptor family, okay? And these are the one, okay, these, these are for HDL. What they do is they'll bring this cholesterol here. Okay? In 
into this, let's say the cells, in the lytic cells, okay? Now, this cholesterol, when it comes, what is gonna happen? That's something we're talking about, right? Okay? Look, cholesterol has a lot of function right here, okay? So remember, cholesterol is what? 27 carbon molecules, right? Now, when the cholesterol comes here, okay? You know, there's a very, very important enzymes that it sees, but if, before even it sees, you know, but it's not located in the cytoplasm. What is it located here is that, okay, let's just write it down here. It's located in the mitochondria. Okay, let's make, let me make this mitochondria right here. This is, let's say this is my mitochondria. You can think about this as, as a mitochondria. So this cholesterol has to get into this, you know, into this mitochondria. So let's just make cholesterol CHO. Cholesterol, okay. How does this cholesterol get into there? The special pro the special receptor there. That receptor is called star. Okay. Steroid like the steroid, right? Steroidogenic acute. Okay. Regu regulatory protein. This is how the cholesterol gets in the mitochondria of the lytic cells, okay? Because there, this cholesterol is going to see very, very important enzymes. And let me actually draw, you know, black actually here. What is this called? This is called, it's a P450 enzyme, okay? P450 and it's called SCC. What does that mean? This is called side chain cleavage enzymes. Side S side chain cleavage enzyme. Basically, the 27 carbon molecules, okay, they'll remove the Okay, the sites in that coming out, okay, from the 27 carbon, and it will make only 21 carbon, okay. This process, okay, requires this enzyme, all right. And this is, okay, what is that gonna make? The 21 carbon we call that carbon is called, okay, let me write down here. It's called prag pragnolinol. Okay, that's what it's called, pregnenolone. Pregnenolone, that's what it makes, okay? Now, this is a pregnenolone is a 21 carbon, all right? That's what it's gonna make, all right? Now, this pregnenolone, what is gonna happen? This is gonna come out from the, this mitochondria, in this, because enzyme enzyme is located in the cytoplasm. So when it comes down here, okay, it's gonna make, let's, let's make this. So we'll make this a pregnenolone. Okay, so it has a two process it can go, all right? It can do two process. Let me use a different color for this one. It can go this process, or it can go this process. What does that mean? Which basically means is that, okay, this pregnenolone will see a very important enzyme, okay? And that enzyme is called, it is a 17, okay, beta, all right? It's a 17 beta, hydrooxylase enzymes. Sorry, it's not a beta, it's actually, it's called alpha, all right? So 17 alpha hydroxylase enzyme. Basically what it means is that at the 17, at the carbon number 17, this guy is gonna put a hydroxyl group into it, okay? And when they put a hydroxyl group into it, it will become a 17 alpha, same compound. Pregnenone, that's what it makes, okay? Or, or, you know, there's also another enzyme here, which is called 3 beta, okay, and it's a hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase enzyme, okay? It's called hydroxy, okay, it's a steroid and dehydrogenase enzyme. Basically, what it does is that at, you know, at the carbon number 3, you know, what is this? That is a, it will remove that proton group and it will make a ketone group into it, okay? So that will make this a progesterone compound, okay? They just will make a progesterone compound. That's what it will do, okay? And then this progesterone can see a same enzyme, which is a 17 alpha hydroxylase, and it will put a hydroxyl group into the 17 positions, and you know what it will make? It will make a 17 alpha progesterone. That's what it does. Now, that's what is happening here too. So from the 7, 17 alpha pregnant okay, they will see another enzymes, okay? which is very important for you guys to know, what is that called? It's called 1720 lyase enzymes, all right? And same thing here too, 1720 lyase enzymes, okay? Basically, it is going to, 
okay? Lie is this carbon, so at the carbon number 17 and 20, right? That's what it's gonna do. So, ultimate result here is that, what is that gonna make? They're gonna make something called, from here, 17 alpha pregnilion, they're gonna make dihydro, okay? This is called dihydro, okay? Let's me write out, dihydro, epi, and rastron. That's what it's gonna be, DHE. And with this 17 alpha progesterone, they'll make androstenodion. That's what it'll make. All right, guys? This can make androstenone, okay? This dihydro can convert into androstenone too. It can get converted by simply, same, same enzyme right here, but it's gonna be 17 beta, okay? This is, there's an enzyme called like, let's, we'll just write down BSD. Which is a beta, okay, hydroxy steroid dehydrogen enzyme, okay, and that can convert because all we're doing is that, okay, basically we just have to put a carb at, carb at the carbon number three. All we have to do is we have to, you know, remove that and make it more in you know, a double bond with the oxygen. That's what we have to do. So basically, you can say three beta hydroxy steroid dehydrogen enzymes, and you can convert DH into endosteroidin. You can make that, okay? Enterosteroidin, and you know the endosteroidin. This is what it will make, okay? This endosteroidin will see a very, very important enzymes, okay? And you guys have to remember this. What is that enzyme? This is basically, is again, it's a 17 beta, okay? Again, 17 beta, it's a hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase, okay? 17 beta, and I'll just write down HSD, hydroxy steroid dehydrogenase, okay? You know what they do? Basically, you know, after removal of this, right? 1720, and then they'll, at the 17th position, they'll put a hydroxyl group into it, okay? So basically with that, this compound with the interest you're making with this 17 beta, you're making compound, which is gonna be look like this. You should remember this, okay? What is that? Here is gonna be double bond O, right? And you have a double bond right here too, right? And then you have a, Look, and then there's going to be a CS3 group here too, okay? But basically, it looks something like this. And this compound is called testosterone. Okay, what is it called? Our whole hormone. Like, this is called testosterone, all right? So this is how we make testosterone. And not only that, this test is, you know, sometime when it leaves and goes to the peripheral tissues, okay? There is an enzyme they're gonna see. Let's say when it goes to, even if it's it's located in the testes too. Okay, there's an important enzyme. Okay, that is called which is used which is okay which is called five alpha reductase enzymes. You have to remember this. Okay, and what is that? Use a cofactor. Okay, what is the cofactor? It's NADPH. You guys remember this from hexose monofacer? They use this as a cofactor and convert it into NAD. P plus, okay? This 5 alpha reductase is a reducing agent. Basically what it does is that it removes, you see the double bonds right here? And this is usually the 5 position, right? 1, so if I do 1, 2, basically if I do 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, okay? Basically down here it removes the double bond, okay? And makes a dihydrotestosterone. Because if you see a testosterone with the dihydrotestosterone, because remember testosterone is what? 19 carbons, okay? You have a same 19, co 19 compounds, Okay, if I just quickly make this, okay, like this, okay, basically you have it, you're not going to, yeah, so basically, basically from here, all right, what is that going to happen, double bond here, right here, right, it's just that you're not going to see a double bond into the five position, okay, that's what this enzyme does, five alpha reductive enzyme, and they make this very, very, like, you know, powerful hormone, and this is called Okay, let me know. It's called dihydro, okay, testosterone. Or simply you can call this as a DHT right here. Okay, whatever you wanna call. And there's a functions of this dihydro testosterone and testosterone. Okay, and we'll talk about that. Look, because there's a deficiency of this, if there's a deficiency of 5 alpha reductase, there's a clinical conditions, okay, that is called, you know, penis at 12 syndrome, okay? And we'll talk about that too. But now, from the endosteroidone, we made this 
compound, which is testosterone. This is a male hormone, right? And what testosterone does is, look, testosterone can go into the lumen right here, okay? And you know what it does? Look, it's going to bind to this, this, this thing, this androgen binding proteins that is secreted by what? That is made by Satori cells, okay? So this is going to do right here. Let me down testosterone, okay? This is going to bound with the testosterone because basically it's what androgen binding protein does is that it concentrates the testosterone level so, so that way, you know, it can maintain the sperm, okay? So it is very important, the maintenance of the sperm productions, you need the protein, androgen binding, androgen binding proteins that, has, that are secreted by the Satori cells, synthesized by Satori cells, and this testosterone comes and binds you and that concentrates that, okay? That is very, very important in order to, you know, for the good, spermatogenesis and the productions of this you know, to, to maintain the sperm, okay? You need the androgen binding protein and testosterone is gonna go and concentrate this, okay? But remember one more thing, testosterone has that function right there, okay? That's one of the testosterone do. This testosterone, what it also does is, guys, this testosterone has a, look, what should I write down here? Let me write down your testosterone right here. This, guys, okay, this has a negative feedback to the anterior epithelial right here. And what cell is producing? Lytic cell is producing, right? The testosterone has a negative feedback to the anterior pituitary. So that way, it can, okay, decrease the level of secretions of, let me write down here, LH. Okay? And this in heaven, which is synthesized by your Satori cells, what is that? Uh, that regulates the FSS production. Okay? So remember, one more thing. In heaven, okay, regulates the FSS productions. You can say LH regulates the productions of a testosterone. Okay? Sorry, testosterone regulates the productions of a LH based on the hormone level. Okay, if it's a decreased level of testosterone, okay, that's gonna get a negative feedback. So this cells are gonna start producing more LH. Okay, if it's a high, that's gonna give us negative feedback, and this cells are started producing less LH. Okay, so testosterone, negative feedback for the LH productions in heaven. As a negative feedback for the productions of FSH. All right, you have to remember that. Now, what are these testosterone do? Okay, one, the two things we talked. We talked about negative feedback mechanism. We talked about right. We talked about it is going to bind with the androgen binding proteins and concentrate. Uh, you know, the testosterone is going to get concentrated once it binds with androgen binding protein, and that's going to work on this guy right here. Okay, we talked about that. Now. The testosterone has other functions too, like other parts of the body. You see this part right here? Right here? Look, testosterone can go to the brain. Okay? And remember, it depends on testosterone level. It can, that's how we have a libido, right? Because libido. But too much of this, if there's too much testosterone, like you know, you probably know, like some people take this too much testosterone, right? And that can what? Or if you're high level testosterone, that also can create aggressive behavior. Okay? Aggressions. And a brain, that's what it does there. Look, what is this larynx? What does it do in larynx? And what does this larynx do? Or testosterone in larynx? There will be a growth of, let me try it down. The growth of larynx, okay? And what is that growth of larynx does? Okay? Deepening the voice. It's just a deepening the voice, okay? So it's around deepening the deepening the voice. Okay? Now what about okay look, testosterone do this. Testosterone do here. What about this testosterone do here in the bone? Remember, in the bone, growth of the bone, okay, and the connective tissue. Alright? That's what it does. Growth of the bone and connective tissue. That's what it does in the bone right here. What about the muscle cells? Remember, people take people. The reason why people take testosterone is why for the muscle growth, right? Muscle growth, connective tissue growth, right? So that way they can be big, right? That's why people take the people take testosterone, right? So that's what it does in the muscles. What is the liver? It does. Remember, testosterone here. It can increase the okay, LDL, VLDL. Low density lipoprotein, very low density in the liver, but it's going to decrease the what? HDL. That's what it's going to do, okay? In the red blood cells, 
It's very important for the red blood cells. What are they going to do? They are going to stimulate the bone marrow house to produce what? More red blood cells. Okay, erythropoiesis. That's what testosterone do in the in your red blood cell. But you see this structure right here. Look, this is my testicle. This is my epididymis. There's a vast differences. We get fused with the this is seminal vesicle right here. Okay, and they make an exactly a duct, and then that goes to the internal. This is a urethra right here. Okay, and then right here penis. Okay, so what is what does testosterone do? Remember, testosterone. We know that what testosterone do in the you know. Right here, that's a, this is a seminiferous tubule right here, okay? And that does, goes down into the epididymis, right? Remember, these are the internal structures, right? The, these are the internal secondary structures of the male, right? Differentiation of, let me write down here, differentiations of, like this, all this epididymis, right? And what are all this? Vast difference, right? Vast differences and this uh, seminal vesicles and then also the The hormones the stimulus that that gets produced from the seminal vesicles and they get secreted out that is That is dependent on the level of testosterone Okay, testosterone. That's what it does. Okay, so it's really differentiates of epididymis vast differences seminal vesicle that is on this also one more thing remember guys I've talked about this before too, but let's quickly manage this is very important Remember, if I say this is my scrotum right here, okay? And let's say this is my abdomen right here, okay? This is my abdomen. This is my scrotum. The process in which, remember, in which the, the scrotum, okay, moves, descend downwards and sits down here, okay? Let's say these are two uh, testes, okay? This process that happens through this inguinal canal, okay? This process is also depend on the, on the level of testosterone, okay? Remember, if the testosterone is deficiency, there will be a failure of this testic testis descending downward. And there's a condition that can happen. That's called cryptoorchidisms. Okay? Because that is basically the failure of testis go to downwards. Okay? Remember, that's what it does with this uh, with testosterone. Alright? This is for the testosterone. But what about this? This dihydrotestosterone do, okay? Remember, this testosterone also, let me just quick it out. In the skin too, okay? In skin, what is that? The pubic hair growth, okay? The pubic, axillary, let me write down. Pubic, right? Axillary, hair growth, all that do, okay? That's what it does. But remember, though, how these guys get to this, all these different part of the peripheral tissue? When the testosterone makes it, the testosterone secretes out in here in the blood, and then testosterone can bind with the one is albumin, okay? It can bind with the albumin. And usually like 50% of testosterone binds with the albumin. And also one, it can bind with the, what is this called? Like sex hormone binding globulin. And about 44% can bind into it. And all the rest would be the free testosterone, okay? It's very important. Because high level of this SSBG can what? It can decrease the free level of testosterone, okay? And it's the free level of testosterone is the biologically active one, all right? Now, not only that, the testosterone, what is that? What are you, this testosterone, these are the functions of the testosterone in different part of the peripheral tissue, right? But remember, as I said, this testosterone can form this, this very, very, very active, this another level of testosterone, which is called dihydrotestosterone. What does this do? Remember guys, these dihydrotestosterone are very, very important for differentiations of, oh, it's, it's early phase, okay? So let me write down. Or differentiations of your penis, okay? Scrotum, and the growth of your prostate gland. You have to remember this, guys. Remember, if this is early phase, okay? Because remember, if this enzyme is deficiency, that what is you you cannot make the hydrotestosterone. So if you cannot make the hydrotestosterone, what is gonna you're not gonna form this external genitalia for male, okay? So people who have this deficiency, you know, they can have you know female internal and external part. That that's what they can have, okay? Basically, if this enzyme is deficiency, then you're not gonna make that. So you you're not gonna make that. So you're not gonna you're not going to form all that, all right? So, this enzyme is very, very important, and it's located in the peripheral tissues, okay? Now, after this, 
And remember guys, this is a nucleus, right? But all this plus right here, all the testosterone right here up to, all the testosterone, this is taking place in endoplasmic reticulum, okay guys, just letting you know. Endoplasmic reticulum is taking place. But the five, the five alpha reductase is not present in the endoplasmic reticulum, they are present in the cytoplasm, right? Now, this dihydrotestosterone, in a late phase, okay, these guys are very, very important for doing, you know, the two things. One is the bald, bald pattern, okay? That's what it does, making men bald and all, okay? And also the activity of the subacuous gland, that's what it does. Because testosterone works, okay, on the subacuous gland, but the, in, the activity, the, the subacuous gland activity, it's completely depend on, okay, that's completely depend on this dihydrotestosterone, okay? So if there's a, if there's an enzyme with, like, so that's the reason why later, you know, you're going to see this, all this bald, bald good, good pattern. All right? So this is very, very important. Now, so this is for, about the dihydro and testosterone, okay? Now, let's talk about a couple of things. You know, let me tell you something about, you know, whenever people or men, when they take like a lot of this, you know, story, like testosterone to, to, you know, increase the, mu increase the muscle mass, okay, you probably have seen that, you know, the exogenous substances when the, when you put inside your body, you know, what happens with this, when you take too much of testosterone in your body, you know, first what happens, okay, you are going to see increase in what? Increase in muscle mass, you're going to see that, okay, you're going to see increased size, there's going to be growth, oh, you're going to see that, okay? You're also going to see that, look, there's more stimulation on the red blood cells, so you're going to see more what? Basic, those hemoglobin and all that level, okay? So basically, there will be increase in the, the red blood cell production and all, okay? You're going to see all of that, all right? But what is going to happen is that the level of this, okay, because the testosterone is, testosterone is really high because you're pumping out, what is going to happen is that there will be a decreased level of LH is producing, okay? So when there's a decreased level of LH is producing, what is going to happen? Your testes are going to become very, very important. Your testes will be smaller, okay? And the other one, by taking too much, other one is that, you know, other, th other thing that's also going to happen is that, you know, whenever there's a low level of testosterone is there, what is going to happen here is that there will be imbalance between the level of estrogen okay, the male estrogens, and then testosterone, okay, so when this abnormal, because remember, how do you make a testosterone to estrogen, there is, like there in the peripheral tissues, or in like even testes, there's an enzyme called aromatase, okay, basically put an aromatic ring into it, and makes a compound called estradiol, okay, there's, a, there's estrogen, okay, so, and that also happens in the peripheral tissues. But remember, when the level of this is and testosterone is like sort of like abnormal, okay, because there's a low here and there's a high here. What is gonna happen? This estrogens, okay, can if that it can come here, estrogen, and you know what can it can work into the cells, okay? The cells, lactotrope cells, okay, and what is gonna happen? They're gonna synthesize what? Prolactin. That's what it's going to do. And then the prolactin is going to work, go and work on the breast of the man. Okay, so basically result into, in the, in the male, low-level testosterone, result into what? The growth of breast in male. Okay? There's a growth, and there's a, the, the breast is going to swell up. Okay? And what is that condition called? Okay, that condition is called what? Galacto... Galactomastia, right? That's what it's called. And also, you know, you could also have a galactorrhea also, which means that, you know, discharge of milk from the male breast, okay? And that is called galactorrhea. That could also occur, okay? Whenever you take this endogenous, exogenous, like, you know, outside of this outside testosterone, when you inject that to basically, you know, to try to grow your muscles, okay? And this is something that you have to remember. So basically, when you have your andro this is called abuse, right? This is androgenic abuse, when, me when male do that, 
it can result into small testes, it can result into galactosemia, it can also result into galactorrhea, okay? That is something that you have to remember. Yeah. I think this is like, I try to cover a lot, guys, here. Uh, you know, so I hope that I was able to, you know, answer some of your questions. And I hope that I made it very, very clear. Um, thank you for watching this. And please don't forget to subscribe and like the channels. All right. Thank you. Thank you.